Chapter 32 How did you know? Ricky asked her. Your disappearance from the car was a big clue, Scout said. Also, I figured your brother wasn't the one who attacked my friends because he seemed really shocked when he heard what happened to them. But your brother and Jaron are online buddies, and I figured you had to have heard about the movie that way. You attacked Jaron in his car and either convinced him to help you stop the movie, or he found out later and offered to help. It was the second, Jaron said. I recognized her voice from the night she came looking for Sean. He and I once dated the same girl, the one who kicked in our apartment door, strangely enough, and I thought he was a good guy. I didn't want Duke making a movie about his death, and I felt bad for Ricky. I went to her with my plan to sabotage the movie. Sorry about throwing all the attention on you at the theater, Ricky said to Jaron. There was too much attention on my brother. He always gets caught up in his games, so I used him to find out about the movie. He barely understood what he was hearing. That's why I love him, and though he loves me, he would never hurt anybody. He shrugged. No big deal. Who killed Gina? Scout asked angrily. Jaron looked to the floor. I did. It wasn't planned. I was going to attack Duke that night, but I couldn't find him. You were the next best thing. I brought a knife, and I only meant to scare you with the threat of death. Then Gina fell off the pipe. I saw she was paralyzed, and I... You thought you were doing her a favor, Scout finished. And now you're going to kill Duke and me? I fucking told you not to come, Jaren snarled. And you brought a friend. Where is she, anyway? You'll never know. Scout grinned, taking pleasure in knowing her friend was hidden from these people. Are you disappointed, Duke? Jaren asked. The killer is someone you know, someone very close to you. Meh. Duke shrugged as well as he could in the ropes. I'm guessing you used my prop knife and movie blood to fake Ricky's death in the car. Bravo. I tried to do this the bloodless way, Jaron went on. I knew Seth was still in the frame when we filmed at the diner. I was hoping you'd get so frustrated that you'd want to quit. Then you don't know me very well, Duke said. Obviously not. Even dropping bricks on you and trying to drown you in your laundry chute didn't change your mind. I'm impressed. Scout looked to Ricky. And you're okay with this? With killing people? Ricky narrowed her eyes. I killed Tony in my garage, and it felt amazing. I lost count of the number of times I drove him into the wall, and I used to love that man. Killing two strangers will mean nothing to me. And this is all because I made some stupid movie? Duke asked. You can't please everyone, I suppose. Jaron looked at Ricky. You can kill them both. I'll wait outside. He started toward the front door. Your father went to prison for you, Scout said suddenly. Jaron stopped in his tracks. Did the cops assume it was him? Jaron looked over his shoulder. He took the blame for me. And all those letters you get from him? He keeps apologizing to me, telling me it wasn't my fault. He says he'll do anything for me. Do you forgive him? What's it to you? Do you forgive him? Scout asked again. I haven't decided yet. Maybe. If you can possibly forgive your dad for everything he's done to you, can't you forgive Duke for making a movie despite the fact your life was put in danger because of it? Are you really going to let this heifer kill your friends? Heifer? Ricky said. She slapped Scout. I really liked you when we first met, Scout said. But if I'd known how crazy you are, I wouldn't have bothered talking to you. I'm going to kill you first. Ricky raised the knife over her head, preparing to strike. Suddenly, she was tackled from the side by Jaron. They struggled over the knife. Scout struggled with the ropes, feeling them loosen. Jaron screamed as Ricky stabbed him in the stomach. Jaron! Scout screamed. Ricky pulled the knife out and got to her feet 
wiping her mouth. She stared down at Jaren as he bled onto the floor. Her eyes were wide, her breath coming fast. Then she looked at Scout. You're in the same position I was that night, she told Scout. Only, the man across from me had been stabbed twenty times. She walked up to Duke. Tony stabbed Sean in the shoulder first. She did the same to Duke. He screamed. And then he wrapped an arm across Sean's chest and stabbed him in the stomach. She started to do the same when someone came through the front door. Freeze! A few police officers stood there, pointing guns at Ricky. Someone walked in behind them, staring at the scene. Taylor? Scout called. Her friend stood there, her buzz cut covered in dried blood. Her clothes were dirty from her nap in the woods. I guess I was far enough away from the cell phone scrambler to call the cops. Are you okay? I am now, Scout smiled. The cops handcuffed Ricky and called an ambulance for Jaron and Duke. Once Scout was untied, she hugged Taylor tightly. Keep an eye on him, Scout told the cops as she pointed at Jaron. He's the other killer. Got it, one of the officers replied. Jaron and Scout locked eyes for a moment. Then he smiled at her. <laughs>